Shepherd Lutheran Church in Washington, Kansas, by Pastor Shannon. Hi, guys. From the Presbyterian Church, and by Pastor Debbie. Good morning. From the Methodist Church. We will begin this service knowing that God loves each and every one of us and that we are welcome no matter where we are or what the conditions are. We will begin by singing the first verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We prepare to come welcome, welcome Christ Jesus Messiah into the bustle of our lives and the heart to find moments of solitude. We prepare to welcome Christ Jesus Messiah into our homes and situations along with friends and families. We prepare to welcome Christ Jesus Messiah into our hearts and those, are, are those often hidden parts of our lives. We prepare to welcome Christ Jesus Messiah. For beneath the surface of your story is an inescapable fact. You entered this world as vulnerable as any one of us. In order to nail that vulnerability to the cross, our fears, our insecurities, and our sins, all that can separate us from God exchanged by your grace for love. We cannot comprehend the reasoning only marvel that salvation comes to us through a baby born in a stable and reaches out to a world in need. In this season of anticipation, we prepare to welcome Christ Jesus Messiah. Well, in the season of Advent, let us jump in. And we are actually not in a traditional Advent um, text. And so this is going to be a really interesting conversation because... Um, I actually think most of the texts can lead us into Advent, but it's um, sometimes... This is a winding path. <laughs> well, I think because we don't usually go here. No, we don't. And so this is a story that's going to be... But it tracks along with the stories that we've been sharing, so that's why it's here. Esther 4, 1 through 17. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went through the city, wailing a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. In every province where the king's command and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and most of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her the queen was deeply distressed, 
She sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hathath, one of, Morde one of the king's eunuchs who had been appointed to attend her, and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what was happening and why. Hathath went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction that he may show it to Esther and explain to her and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and to entreat him for her people. Hathak went and told Mordecai, Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message from Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death. Only if the king holds out the golden scepter to someone may that person live. I myself have not been called to come to the king for 30 days. When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But if you and your father's family will perish, who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do, and after that I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything Esther had ordered him. This is God's word. Thanks. Be to God. <clears throat> so let's just get some history or some yeah. context for this story. So this is during the Babylonian exile. Right. And so I don't know, do, we read Habakkuk last <clears throat> week, and that was just before the Babylonians came and conquered. And so then you get into this part, and they are now, they've been taken, all the royalty, all the politicians, all the people of importance, all the rich and wealthy have been taken out of Jerusalem, and they have been forced to live in Babylonia. And this is during that time. And so Esther is living in a time when the people are under oppression. And um, in some ways, they're free to practice. But openly practicing causes all sorts of things to happen. We have the story of Daniel in the lion's den that happens during this time. And um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And like all these like things that when they try to openly practice their faith, it gets... Destroyed, and so Haman is one of the king's court, right. and Haman has tricked the king into signing a decree for the destruction of all the Jewish people, and so this is what Mordecai is in sackcloth over. And, and Mordecai is Esther's father, I believe. Uncle, uncle, uncle. uncle thank you, Esther's uncle, and so and Esther is a beautiful woman. Oh, she has beautiful to be. Yes, queen. yes, beautiful queen. Right. But even with her beauty and even with the love of the king, there's still this protocol that says, you are not going to be able to come and see me. Even though you might be my wife, you cannot come right. to the inner court and ask of any ask anything of me. I must summon, summon you first. And if you dare to come into my court, you'll die. That's right. Unless punishment. I grant you mercy. Unless I grant you mercy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everything is in his right. hands, so to speak. And... And, and, and th that's very important to remember because he has been tricked mm -hmm. into signing this decree, not knowing that he's actually signed a death warrant for his own wife. wife. Right, right. And she could keep silent. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's also really important because she could stay quiet and no one would know because she's when she was recruited for the position of his wife, Mordecai had told her, don't tell anyone about your origin. Your origins, yeah. And so not she's not origins. out yes. as a Jewish woman. <laughs> right. So she could keep quiet. And but spare herself. And spare herself. And her household. Right. But, but her whole entire family, her people, they will die. There's, This is the whole thing. Um, and as you read in the story, I mean, you should read this story. It's a short book in the Bible, Esther, all about Esther. But... Um, 
eventually, like, she prevails, and um, she manages to save the people. And it's a really, like, tricky way that she does it. The king writes an edict that tells the Jews that they can rise up against anyone who is oppressing and seeking their destruction. And the Jews are still a powerful people, and so they basically, like, freak everyone out, and everyone's like, okay, we won't touch you. <laughs> like, is how that ends up happening. Um, but, I mean, Esther had to throughout all her life had to figure out her identity. She did. Her identity. And so was she like was really an away. orphan and she came right. into a society that was in destruction and that didn't knew treat that his, that her life, you know, there for a while Mordecai and Esther had to hide. Mm. And they were running in fear of their life. Right. And so I think sometimes Esther were like you know, when God calls us to do something, to stand mm -hmm. in his truth, Esther might be saying, who, me? Right. I'm mm -hmm. not worthy. Right. I'm mm -hmm. not powerful. Why would you call me? Right. And Esther is this wonderful, symbolic story of where the people are at. Because of Esther, like, you love that you talked about identity. Because she's a person, she's a woman seeking identity. The Jews are people who've been displaced, and their entire identity is gone. Their, mm -hmm. their religious center was Jerusalem, and that has been taken away from them. I think it's very interesting also that she was so well insulated within, her, within the palace. Mm -hmm. She was so well insulated that the way that the word got to her that there was something wrong with her people is Mordecai tore his clothes, put on mm -hmm. sackcloth, and put on ashes and went through the streets lamenting and weeping and wailing. Otherwise, she may not have known. Right. You right. know, and so I think that's very interesting that she was that well insulated and could very well have said, lost her identity, as mm -hmm. you said, you know, lost her identity and all of that and just kind of backed away from that and from him. And I love the power that tearing your clothes and sitting in the ashes has. There's power in the lament. Um, gosh, as you get into this Christmas season, there are a lot of really powerful themes, aren't there? There's a lot of really strong things coming out because what is the candle today? Peace. peace. The peace candle. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, I don't know about you. I was talking with my spiritual director about this even today. And it was... Just sort of lamenting the layers of chaos in my life. Um, there are the basic layers, like the scene in Home Alone when they're running around trying to get everything together and they leave Kevin <laughs> behind. When they get up late. Because <laughs> they get up late and the chaos is with them. Right. There are those. There are the craziness of grabbing all the boxes out of your um, basement and laying it all out and seeing it in your house and thinking my house will never be clean again. Well, <laughs> there's there's mm -hmm. the trying to navigate family uh, chaos that we have. I mean, some and, of and, us and that's joyous and some of that's painful. No, um, and yeah. in, in all of that, what we really want is control right. over all of that. Right. You know, that's what we want. So we want control just like Mordecai went in control, and now Esther went in control over this entire situation. And we don't have the tools for that. Well, I, mean, I think the thing of it is, is that it feels like control will lead us to peace. If things are in order, if things are controlled, this is a perfect Presbyterian conversation. <laughs> if things are in order, yes. if things are controlled, mm -hmm. then we will be at peace. And does and that we'll work out? Well, because we're human. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, there's no cure for human. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying there's no cure for being human. There's books out there that says there's no cure for being human. We are human, but, you know, I think we also need Esther's to step in and to speak the word of truth. Yes. And all of what's going on, and not just our families, but in our world, we need people like Esther to step out of their comfort zone, mm -hmm. you could say, or take their fears and speak the word of life, yes. which gives us hope, which gives us peace. Yes. And then we go to, to love and joy in this Advent season. We need those people. So the question is, 
Like, are we ready or are we? will we stand up for Jesus? What are you doing to bring peace? And what are you doing to bring peace? Exactly. And, right. and who's going to give you that power and strength? Well, we know through God, through Jesus, we will have that power and strength. But, you know, Esther had to go and do hard places. You know, we see not only Esther, but many people, Daniel and Mordecai. And Mordecai, yeah, Mordecai had invented... Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. had to go to hard places mm -hmm. to go ahead and lead in peace. Mm -hmm. And to wait, God calls people, certain people, to do that. And, and the sacrifice that she made, I mean, just on the surface alone, three days of fasting. Okay, so we have the three days of fasting. And then she goes to the inner court. Okay, you're already, if you've ever fasted Hangry. before. Yeah. <laughs> and weak and shaky. And now you're going to go into this very uncertain situation where you could most probably lose your life. You know, the sacrifice to me, that was just on the surface yeah. of it all. But I, yeah, angry is right. <laughs> I think it's amazing. And what power does any one of us really have to make a difference? Right. I mean, we are called to make a difference in this world. But we do have power. We do. I mean, mm -hmm. as challenging as those things are, they were practical, simple things that people did to enact change in their world. They didn't sit back and say, woe is me. They didn't sit back and say, I'm okay because I'm here in the palace. <laughs> right. <laughs> or I'm fine. I'll just go, I'll just go seek refuge with my niece. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So I think those are bold calls to us as Christians because as Christians, we want to do what the world is doing. We want to put up our lights. And we want to decorate our sanctuaries and we want to be joyful and we want to be excited and we want to like experience the Christmas season, the, the reason for the season, which is getting lost, right? Um, but, but there's a whole there's lot of Mordecai. A whole lot of Mordecai we have to get to. You're right. I love that you said that. Yeah. Yeah. That this it should make us shake. Because the truth of the matter is, Scripture says, you are not here to placate the world. You are here to take care of my stuff, take care of my kingdom, mm -hmm. to build God's kingdom on this earth. We are part of God's story. We are. Mm -hmm. We are. Mm -hmm. And we are not here to take the easy way. Right. And that is hard. So it's not about giving a couple of cans of good food food no. items to the food bank or picking up an angel, which you should do. Mm -hmm. Picking up an angel and buying an angel tree, they right. trinket, trinket, present, gift, whatever. <laughs> um, right. We are here to do hard work, to get into the muck and the muddiness of this world. And we should feel honored and blessed that we have been given that gift. <sighs> so hard to feel honored <laughs> and blessed. But you're right, Joe. We should feel honored and blessed. That makes me think about funerals. I know that seems like a weird thing. I know, right? But whenever I'm asked to do a funeral, I feel honored and blessed. But, mm -hmm to be asked into that space. Here's the thing. If people trust you enough as a Christian, because let's be honest, Christian is becoming a dirty word. If people trust you enough as a Christian to let you enter their space, you should feel honored and blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, our hymn this week is, if you have a Lutheran book of worship at home, it is number 415, God of Grace and God of Glory. How many verses? Two. One and two. Mm -hmm.
and then we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. So please pray with me. Eternal God, we are ever so aware of our ties to the biblical world as we have today entered the world of Esther. We regret that so little has changed in our public life since then. There is still intrigue in high places. There are still unholy alliances. There are still the dynamic of the fearful trying to do away with, or at least to get out of the way, perceived enemies or threats to their power. There is still the problem of evil in the guise of good. There is still deceit used to gain selfish ends. So it will be world without end. Yet we ask your aid as we go about building our lives, our nation, and our world in this 21st century. May we not be disillusioned because of the deceit of people's hearts. May we not lose faith in people because of the faithlessness of the few. May we not fail to see this as your wonderful world or be dispirited. May we not lose a faithful and expectant spirit which is expectant for good, expectant for hope, expectant for triumph. May we not lose hope in the ultimate triumph of good over evil. As in Esther's day, may we not forget to make days of feasting and thanksgiving and gladness and give you thanks for your goodness to us. Be with us, O God, who turns sorrow into gladness, weakness into strength, defeat into triumph. Give us, give us triumph spirits and hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have come to the point of the service where we are asked to respond to God's word. There's a variety of ways in which that can be accomplished. In this season of Advent, it's as we are filming, it is Giving Tuesday. And I have, for the life of me, had a real conflict with designating one day as Giving mm -hmm. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that we are so richly blessed that every day should be some kind of giving. And it doesn't, we always think about monetary, but you know, giving away a smile costs you nothing or Kindness costs you nothing. So please consider those things. Also consider your monetary gifts if you want to, to the Ministerial Alliance here in Washington County. Those can be sent to St. Augustine's Church to Father Kiefer, or you can send them here to Good Shepherd at 401 D Street. Also, Edith's House, the food pantry, mm -hmm. is located here at Good Shepherd. And they are, even in this time where we are richly blessed with food, there is still such a high demand. The visits to the food pantry have gone up. I was reading through some material the other day and they said that the very unique thing that's happening now is that people that used to volunteer at the food pantry have now become customers of the food pantry. So they're mm -hmm. using it as well. And, and in this day and age, when things are just more expensive, we can expect more of that. Right, so. and we see that in our own community. Exactly. You know, there are exactly. volunteers who then partake the from the food banjo, which is just fine. It is. That is what it's there for. Mm -hmm. So um, you can consider donating to the food pantry, monetary or food items. Or you can send your donations to the Methodist Church at 400 C Street. Or the Presbyterian Church. To Susan Keysucker, our treasurer. I would encourage you to give as the widow gave. And where do they send to the Lutheran Church? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 401 D Street is where you send. <laughs> so have the heart of the widow's might when you give. Give as you see fit. Please join me and enter into a word of prayer. Eternal God. You make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
So for our benediction, what I want to do is send you out with a simple question. Take this time this week to ask yourself, how can I bring peace to this world? Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.